Hi, uh, my name's Rob and I'm a developer from Lumio and this is the first of a few screencasts I'm going to record. This one on setting up your development environment. Um, we're going to run through on OS X. If you use Linux then it's a wee bit simpler and you're probably more capable of reading the command lines and pasting them in from our documentation which is where we start. So, GitHub Lumio, Lumio, Wiki. And the first link, set up a Lumio development environment. Us Mac users need to install Homebrew, um, paste this command to do that. Hooray! Homebrew is installed. In reality that took about an hour. So we continue on with the instructions. Copy and paste this. This is to install git, postgresql, and pkg config. And here they go. Let's install image magic. This is used to uh, resize group and profile images. Okay, image magic is installed. Um, following the installation of PostgreSQL, we are going to make sure that it starts with the, when the computer starts up. This is really useful. It's optional, um, however, I recommend it. Um, if you don't develop all the time, then you may want to manually start PostgreSQL. Um, to conserve memory. Here we install RB, ENV and Ruby build. We use these instead of Homebrew to install Ruby. Um, they make it easier and give us more control and they're usually more up to date with the latest Ruby version than Homebrew as well. So let's go ahead and copy out these commands and set up RB, ENV, and Ruby build. The next command is echo export path. Um, what we're doing is we're setting up the shell environment to use RB, ENV supplied Ruby binaries before the system versions of Ruby. Um, now to do that, we need to make sure that the bash profile file, or the bash profile file name is correct. And here I've used dot bash profile. Um, and that looks like it's the same version as what this version of OS X is using. So we can run that command as is. If you're not sure, you can just ls hyphen la in your home directory. Let's continue on, installing the other rbnv commands into our bash profile. And finally we're going to run the command source dot bash profile. And this just makes sure that those settings that we've put into the files are being used by the current environment. To verify that rbenv is set up correctly, we just run this command type rbenv. We should see rbenv as a function and indeed the contents of that function. That's great. Now we can continue on to build, to build Ruby build. Um, it's a git plugin, a git based plugin. So we'll paste this command as usual. And away it goes. When a new version of Ruby comes out, um, it's very easy to update Ruby build so that it's aware of the latest versions of Ruby it can build for you. Just copy these two commands, changing into the Ruby build directory and doing a git pull to get the latest version of Ruby build. Simple.
Now that Ruby build is installed, we can ask RBE and V to install Ruby for us. Okay, we've successfully installed Ruby version 2.1.5 with RBE and V. Um, now we want to configure our shell to use Ruby 2.1.5 whenever we want to use Ruby using the RB ENV global command. We want to fork the Lumio project and clone it. This is essentially downloading the Lumio source code. So as it says in the instructions, we want to visit github slash Lumio slash Lumio and fork the project. So having forked Lumio into our own GitHub repo, we're going to create ourselves a project directory. We're going to use the git clone command to clone Lumio. I'm going to enter rob guthrie slash Lumio dot git. Let's just check I got that right and follow it with the projects directory where we want Lumio to be installed. Now Lumio is a Rails project. Rails projects have a lot of gems usually. To install those gems using the Ruby version that we built with RB and V we run gem install bundler. This installs the bundle command, which installs every other Ruby gem in the system. Now, this is RB ENV specific, but you need to run this command after installing gems which have commands themselves, such as bundler. Here we're going to use the bundle command provided by bundler. So we have to do an RB ENV rehash before we do that. So bundle install reaches out to the internet, grabs the Ruby gems, and installs them locally onto the system so that the Lumio Rails app can reference them. So bundler has just finished. You'll see the output with some bundlers complete messages. Um, post install messages from gems, that's all really good. So let's continue on. Following down the document, the next step is set up your database. Um, now if you're an Ubuntu user, um, what we do is we log in as the Postgres user, use the Postgres user to create a database user with the same username as your system username, so in my case it's Rob, R-O-B. I would do create user dash s Rob and then exit. What that allows me to do is use Postgres without a password as if I'm logged in in a particular username and there is a corresponding Postgres user account then, it is, then the system assumes that I'm allowed to use that account and it does not require a password. This comes preset up with the homebrew version of Postgres that we're using. So Mac users get that done for them, and they can continue on following these instructions. Um, so let's let's follow them on. Copy the example database configuration file into place. And let's have a little look at that database config file and see what it looks like. So it's got a development and a test section, adapter, PostgreSQL, database, Lumio development, and it's not mentioning usernames, passwords, host names of the database or ports or anything like that. All of those are left for defaults and I think that those defaults are going to work pretty well. Next stage is bundle exec rake db setup. 
a lot of the Rails commands that you'll see have bundle execs prefixed on them. Um, we need that to load the Rails environment before we go and run other commands. It's a wee bit longer, but it's just the way it's done in the world of Rails. Bundle exec, rake db setup. Hooray, that worked. Now we can start the Rails server. Copy. A final paste. Okay, this is what it looks like when the Rails app starts up. It says listening on 0.0.0.0 colon 3000. That is your local host port 3000. Let's get another tab here. Local host port 3000. You can see that the web server has started processing a GET request. And it's rendered the page in 23 seconds. Not too bad for a virtual machine running its first page render using an interpreted language many levels down from reality. Um, okay, that's that. This is a Lumio development environment. It's set up um, ready for you to do amazing things with. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you follow through to the next screencast where we show how to set up Lumio for production environment, serving two users. See you then.